what was that moment like for you to sing that with your son? Special, right? Like I've done this stretch a few times. I've goofed around and done it as Harry Carey. I've done it as myself, but to have that moment on my son's 17th birthday, Sunday was his birthday. And, you know, I'm telling him the morning of, Hey, we're going to go sing the stretch. And he's just like beaming, like, are you serious? And that's like something we'll have for the rest of our lives. Like he spent so much time at Wrigley and to be able to, to do that, who knows he's a senior next year, who knows he might be off and, and we don't get those times very, very much when they're teenagers and to have something like that was pretty cool. All right, so you spent 16 years in the show, Ryan, but you have a son that's 17. What's more surprising to you? <laughs> uh, the, more surprising, probably the 17-year-old son. Yeah, like I always knew I was going to be a Major League Baseball player as a kid. I, it's what you dream about, so you, you, you're not as surprised. But the fact that I have a 17-year-old, like I said, you know, pretty soon they're you know graduating high school, and he's, he's talked about like going to Europe and like I'm going to go do a little <laughs> – stint over there and i said as long as your gap year doesn't lead to a gap life we're good go do it have fun so yeah i'm, yeah, so I'm really excited <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have so many friends are like yeah my daughter kiana she's just gonna take a gap year i'm like be careful make sure it's only 365 days or she's gonna be living with you for the rest of her life all right let's talk about the cubs just for a second i know that you're super locked in on what's going on they have an opportunity to sweep the team you know the baseball's best team in the tampa bay rays what have you seen from them ryan over the last couple of games yeah, I just think, you know, A, starting pitching. I mean, Marcus Stroman, the game he has, a complete game, one-hit shutout. And then Kyle Hendricks, I just think, you know, that was such a positive sign, you know, to follow that up. His second start back from the IL after, you know, shoulder surgery and going through all that. And, I mean, their starting pitching has been really good, minus, you know, the last turn through the rotation this series against Cincinnati, they struggled. But, um, you know, the pitching's been good offensively. I think just tightening up the bullpen a little bit, you know, finding those guys to find their groove. But, Baseball is this crazy game. A lot they get swept by the the Reds, and I'm not knocking the Reds. I'm just saying. And then now you go and you face the best team in baseball, and you're one win away from sweeping them right back. So it just shows you a the parity in the game that anybody can win on any given day, um, and that you know the season you're still trying to work through these things, and you're still trying to find the groove. And I, I feel like once they kind of get that going in the bullpen, this is a team that can take off a little bit because offensively they're going to put up runs and they. You know, they're not even have Cody Bellinger in the lineup right now. Um, he's out still. So once they get him back, they get a little deeper. Patrick Wisdom struggled a little bit. He finally got back on the board with some home runs. So, you know, I feel like this is a team. Obviously, you look at the standings, they're under 500, but they're right there near the top of the division. So it's anybody's division to win. And you like Matt McClain. What do you like about him? Oh, man, this kid. I'll tell you what. I watched three days. I mean, first round pick out of UCLA, 5'8", 180 pounds. Nothing like I played with Dustin Pedroia and he had a little bit of that Dustin Pedroia in him. And I just say that because of the stature, but he plays bigger than that. I mean, the line drives all of the ballpark gap to gap. You know, he can hit the ball. He's got power to be able to hit it over the fence. He has a really good arm across the infield. Um, he's fast. He runs it. He, he plays with his hair on fire. Um, it was just fun to watch him over the weekend. Unfortunately for the Cubs, it meant, you know, you had to p pitch against this guy and he, and he had just a dominating win, uh, weekend at Wrigley. He goes to Boston. It's another knock last night. So um, just, a, just a really talented individual. And I think, you know, speaks to the Reds kind of depth that they have for that position. You got Ellie De La Cruz that's coming up next. They moved Barreo to center field because they don't even have a spot. So, you know, this is a kid who's making the most of an opportunity. He got a chance to play shortstop, and he's just absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. He's making great plays defensively and, and showing why he was a first-round pick. Yeah, it looks like he could be the shortstop of the future for the Reds. I want to circle back to the Cubs just for a second. My goodness, what has gotten into Christopher Morrell? I mean, it's like every time he's at the plate, he's hitting the ball out, out of the yard. Yeah, I mean, special kid, right? Like So special human being, first and foremost, just the way he treats everybody on a daily basis. And then, the, you know, the electrifying – kind of persona that he brings he plays hard he you know he hits the ball hard he's got you know 20 homers combined between you know the minor leagues and the big leagues and he came up on fire um and then you know his ability to get out there and energize kind of his teammates and um you know you can have these great dudes and then sometimes maybe it doesn't translate into on the field or vice versa you're really good on the field but to be the clubhouse guy maybe not your role he personifies both. You know, he, he's got an opportunity. He went to AAA out of spring training after having a really good year last year. He didn't complain. He was a great teammate down there. He worked hard. 
Matt Mervis gets called up before him. He he's sending Matt Mervis, you know, good luck messages. And it's like this kid's heart is gigantic. Um, and, and his energy is just contagious. And, and he's been a little bit of a spark plug and, you know, a, a little bit of a lull here. But, you know, this is the kind of kid who gets on fire. And next thing you know, he's, you know, hitting a bunch of home runs, you know, day after day and hitting the ball hard all over the ballpark. I love watching him play. And uh, he's a great addition to their ball club. Yeah, good clubhouse guy. When I think good clubhouse guy, good leader, I think Dansby Swanson. Seems like he's picked up that role for the Cubs just as he did in Atlanta. Am I right in saying that? <clears throat> no, absolutely. And, you know, Dansby's a guy who, if you look at last year <clears throat> and then you go to um, this year, kind of similar. Starts out slow in April, got a little bit hotter in May, um, and then in June really starts to take off. And, um, you know, he's just been like that constant approach. Uh, I have a chance to be at Wrigley quite a bit. You just watch the work that he puts in, you know, from the ground balls, the cage work, same guy every day. And I just I just think that's so important. You know, sometimes when you, you know, spend that kind of money, uh, you know, change guys, I don't know if that's the right word, but guys can get complacent because now you have, he has not done that one bit. He's been the model teammate, um, you know, and a huge addition, right? When you now can take Nico Horner and slide him over to second base, and you have those two guys up the middle. You have two gold glove caliber shortstops up the middle. The amount of balls that they get to, especially when you have guys like Marcus Stroman on the hill and Justin Steele, and these guys are ground ball pitchers, um, to have these guys behind you making all those plays. He makes the backhand play, the sliding backhand play, as good as anybody in baseball. Um, and then offensively, he's just starting to light up. I mean, he started off hot, hit a little lull, and now he's starting to take off with the power numbers. And um, Just a fun ball player to watch. Uh, you know, my daughter went to the game the other day. She's four years old. She said, I'm a Dansby fan. And it was on her shirt because, you know, it's just fun to watch him play the game. And he's he's making a lot of uh, fans up in Chicago really happy with, with the way he goes about it. Man, Ryan, the Cubs have some really good pieces, both in their lineup and, and on the mound. They can do it. They can make a run here. Oh, plenty of time left. We appreciate your insight, as always. Thanks for being with us. Don't forget, guys, Intentional Talk is live in studio all week long. That man, Ryan Dempster, Kevin Millar, and Sierra Santos. Thanks, Ryan. We appreciate it. Hey, absolutely. Thanks, Alana.